So I'm going to be talking to you about research methods pedagogy in the digital era. Um, and my project, this is a PhD that I'm doing, it's linked to the NCRM work package five, which is looking at pedagogy and research methods more broadly. So what am I going to be talking about? Well, I've got three specific questions that I'm hopefully going to uh, shed some light on in my talk today. The first is, what do we as social research methods teachers, practitioners and learners know about the role of digital technology and the role that it plays in teaching and learning research methods? What are the gaps in our knowledge and understanding and what are the contextual factors that bound the state of our current knowledge? So I'm going to address those three questions, but I'm also going to give you a little bit of background about me um, and about the research that I'm doing and where it fits in. So I have spent all my professional working life as a social research researcher. Uh, I started out in survey research. I started working uh, for what's now the Office for National Statistics. I worked on surveys and I came to specialise in survey methodology and in a particular area of survey methodology related to questionnaire design and testing. I've also worked on qualitative projects and I currently work for NatSEN Social Research, which I've worked for for about 17 years now. And during my working life, I've been involved in receiving professional training as a participant, and I've also been involved in training others, principally through uh, the Social Research Association courses, but also uh, through NatSEN Learning and through um, some of the courses which were run by uh, NCRM's predecessor, CAS. So I've always had an interest in how, how I learn social research methods and also how others learn them and how to communicate that. But within the context of these are often people who are on those courses will be people who are at the stage of applying them. So they're either doctoral students, postdoctoral students, or they're professional researchers working in research institutions or in institutions where research is being carried out. So when I saw this PhD studentship come up, I was excited. I thought this would be a fantastic opportunity um, to work on the project, which is this NCRM-funded Pedagogy of Methodological Learning work package, which Professor Melanie Lind leads. There are a couple of terms that I'm going to use in my presentation which are worthy of a moment's definition. The first is advanced social research methods. Now, my PhD is looking specifically at the teaching and learning of advanced social research methods and the role that digital technology plays in that. But what do we mean by advanced social research methods? There are numerous definitions that are around. So NCRM uses the term to indicate courses that assume prior knowledge and skills, which build on more foundational learning and which describe research methods which are seen as being more difficult to master due to their complexity and sophistication. So things like advanced statistical analysis, perhaps uh, latent class analysis might be in that category, possibly. Um, however, the terms also used by the SRC, who are an important uh, stakeholder in the UK in terms of investment in research methods training, as to describe their investment in innovative forward thinking methods that contribute to its strategic goal of building research capacity. And you could look at NCRM as a vehicle for doing that. But the, 
issue here is that research methods, teaching and learning is changing. And what may be seen as advanced in one context may not be advanced in another. And that's because partly the methods are moving forward. So latent class analysis, for example, is that now an advanced method? Or is that part and parcel of the standard statistical training that would be expected of undergraduates, particularly if they're engaged in a Q-step program, which is designed to build capacity in quantitative research methods? It also depends on the pathway that you've taken through to your postgraduate study. If you've come from a discipline that's been very strong in research methods, or you've come from an institution which has been very strong in research methods, then what you might think of as being advanced may not be the same as somebody who comes from a different background. And we know from what's written about research methods pedagogy that there are variations in terms of where people come from, what their starting point is, and this can be a challenge to teaching and learning. I'm also talking about digital technology. And what I mean here is the use of computer technology, devices, software applications, the use and storing of data and information, and the semantic web, managed learning systems, and social media systems. So I'm not just talking about pieces of tech kit, like PowerPoint or um, using a VLE, a virtual learning environment like Moodle. I'm looking more broadly at the whole range of digital technology that can be used in teaching and learning. So what is known about research methods pedagogy in the digital era? In a sense, our journey at the moment is a bit like the Mars rover. We're taking a look and finding out about what's there. there have, we have some knowledge, but it's, it's patchy. And the short answer is that the evidence is, is quite limited. My review of the literature so far has turned up not that much. And that's possibly not that surprising, as I'll go on and comment on later in my talk. But what, we're, what we do see from the literature is we know something about, in a limited sense, about what digital technology is being used. What we seem to know less of is in what ways and for what purpose and with what effect. There are survey that are done, collecting information more generally uh, in the UK about the use of technology. So, for example, there is the survey that's carried out by the Association of Learning Technologies and the Universities and Colleges Information Systems Association, the USA survey. But they don't tell us anything really about social science, teaching and learning per se, and the use of digital technology. They do tell us that virtual learning environments and online assessment tools are commonly used, as are online discussion and collaboration tools. And in the literature that's written about the teaching and learning of advanced social research methods, we also see authors talking about those tools, perhaps not surprisingly because they are almost expected tools that you will use as part of your teaching um, and learning in a university environment at least. But the literature is very sparse on the ways in which technology is being used to support the sorts of teaching strategies that have been identified by Kilburn, Nind and Wilds in their 2014 paper. In that paper, they identified three strategies which teachers often talk about using, which were active learning. So making the research process visible and engaging students in it. 
learning through doing, so that's facilitating learning through experience of conducting research, and critical reflection on practice. Now, those three areas are not mutually exclusive. They overlap. But what we don't see in the literature is any discussion about how technology, what role technology plays in those different strategies. So we don't have a sense, really, of how the technology is actually being used to support learning, despite all the big claims that are made for technology. In addition, the published peer review literature suggests that digital technology can track students' progress, support teachers and students in identifying threshold concepts that are causing difficulty, so that these can be addressed and facilitate the growth of collective learning spaces and identities. Now, those comments are really useful, but again, there is a lack of detailed research which actually drills into how the technology is supporting these things. So, for example, how does the use of digital technology and what kinds of technology supports, um, for example, threshold concepts being uh, identified as being problematic and then uh, helping students to fully grasp those. There's also limited evidence on what role digital technologies play in teaching and learning of advanced social research methods. We see some limited literature, under 20 papers published that I've come across so far, um, that discusses these issues. And where, where we do have uh, literature, often the discussion of the technology is an aside to the discussion of pedagogy more generally. So the digital technology is not being seen as part of the pedagogy. It's being seen as part of a set of tools that the teacher might use in the classroom, but not necessarily seen as part of the pedagogical decision making around uh, what, how to use technology and in what ways to support learning. There are one or two exceptions to that. Um, some of the Q-step uh, centres have produced papers which have discussed uh, how technology supports, but again, the technology hasn't been the central part of that. The discussion has been on the papers, uh, the, te the pedagogical decisions for teaching and learning of advanced social research methods. So what are the gaps in our knowledge about the role of digital technology in teaching and learning of research methods? As I've highlighted, there are gaps in the literature to help us answer questions, such as how does digital technology support the learning of advanced social research methods, and does digital technology use transform advanced social research methods, content and pedagogy, and if so, how? Do particular technologies fac facilitate particular types of learning? And are certain technologies more effective in learning and developing knowledge in particular learning contexts? For example, in learning a particular method uh, or, in, or learning about doing research in a particular context. But there's very little evidence so far on the role that it plays and how it may transform learning in the way that the claims about digital technology suggest that it does. So why is there so little written about the role of digital technology in teaching and learning? I think it's important to look at that question because it says something perhaps about why pedagogy has been neglected in terms of uh, research methods, teaching and learning for some time. And I would suggest that there's a lack of pedagogical culture in research methods teaching. 
and it stems from or is fed by a number of different uh, factors. One is opportunity. There's little opportunity to conduct research, to publish about um, advanced social research methods, digital pedagogy, and to experiment with digital technologies. There's no, there's no encouragement to do it in the sense that where do you publish? What journals are interested in publishing that kind of material? How do they rate in terms of uh, the kind of uh, scoring systems that exist in the UK for, for publications and putting stuff out there? What's the value attached to teaching versus doing research activity? Re teaching has often been the, the poor relation in a university context to research activity, as it has for those who work in, in the more commercial sector. Teaching is still a secondary activity to the day job of doing, res doing research. And so what does that mean then for publishing? about research methods. There's also issues to do with purpose. Teaching and learning in the context of higher education policy. What, it, what, what does that mean? Where's the focus? The focus is often on outcomes and being able to demonstrate that students are making progress comes in the context of uh, league tables and um, fees for university students and discussions about what the marketisation of higher education might mean. That agenda may shift the focus to thinking about digital technology only in the context of assessment and around making materials accessible, but not about how it actually enhances learning or where its place might be in contributing to learning of research methods. There are also issues of consciousness. So awareness amongst advanced social research methods teachers of the pedagogical debates and their own practice and styles. Teachers may not have had formal training or they, if they may have had some informal training I certainly had nothing more than one or two sessions around train the trainer when I, in all my time uh, teaching. Um, teachers may lack the tools and the scaffolding by which to plan and deliver, reflect and refine their practice in anything more than what Early refers to as the trial and error as they develop and improve upon their own research methods courses. Pedagogical literacy is also an issue. With this lack of awareness about what the pedagogical debates are and the lack of training comes a lack of literacy in the language, the ideas, the concepts of pedagogy. And this may hinder teachers in exploiting digital technology and improving their teaching practice. Then, of course, there are the issues of technology itself. The technological landscape is constantly changing. Knowing which technologies are available, which are supported by the university, what are the technologies that students will use, how to engage and marry those two things together, the technology with the pedagogy, to keep track, to understand enough yourself to feel confident in using the technology. There are also issues of, there is technolo digital technology tools that are research methods tools. So most data analysis, be it qualitative or qualitative, involves using a digit digital technology tool as a piece of software to do that analysis. But then there are, but then there are other tools out there which would be much more around generating uh, discussion and interaction with students, for example, uh, tweet decks, or so that you can keep track of where your students, are they keeping pace with the lecture? You have a live tweet deck up on your 
on your visual presentation, students can, they know what the hashtag is, they can tweet and say, I don't, I'm not following this, you can see it, slow down your pace. But what impact does that have on, on the actual learning process? There are, the use of digital technology in teaching and learning research methods is a big space and teachers themselves may not be in a position of knowing enough about what's called the, the technological content knowledge to know which tools to use. So there's an issue then around bridging the gap in our knowledge and further research is needed to address the gaps. Without it, we run the risk of oversimplifying the role of techno that technology plays in teaching and learning of advanced social research methods and miss opportunities to take advantage of its affordances. My research aims to contribute to this knowledge in this area and to promote debate and dialogue. And I'd welcome your comments and thoughts, experiences, Thank you.